Today on City Line, it's Wellness Wednesday, and a viewer has taken on our low waste challenge. The biggest impact, I would say, is definitely our food waste reduction and our plastic waste reduction as well. Save the planet and your wallet. It's also about saving money, right? Because we yes. throw so much food away. About $1,800 the average Canadian is throwing away every single year of food. Then we put trending fitness products to the test. Been work Woo! those hips, girl. Let's get <laughs> And later, collecting coupons for your groceries. Is it worth it? With couponing, look really um, rigorously at cost versus benefits. It's City Line with Tracy Moore. today. I love it. It's Wellness Wednesday and we've got an incredible show for you today and we better because they are ready. Right? Are you ready? Okay. We love our City Line viewers who write into us for help like Nirmala. So a woman who wants to reduce waste in her kitchen. So we sent our sustainable, a sustainability expert Candace Batista to inspire her and her family to take our 30 day low waste challenge. Take a look. Hi, my name is Normala. I live with my parents, my sister, and my adorable nephew. We are a big family, so we are looking to tackle waste and be as environmentally conscious as we can. I would say the most common thing we throw away is single use cleaning products or pack food packaging. So plastic bags or just container, plastic containers that food comes in. Roughly, our family produces around three to four bags of garbage per week. I really want to reduce the amount of waste in my home. I just have no idea where to start. Hi, Nirmala. I'm Candace. It's so great to meet you. Hi, Candace. Come on in. So one of the biggest things I tell people when they're starting a green journey is to shop their home first. A lot of the time you don't realize you probably have a lot of products already in your home that you can start using right away. So my first impression of Nirmala's kitchen is that it looks like everyone else's. The point is, is to start somewhere and the kitchen is usually a great place to start. Tell me what you typically use to clean your home. To do the dishes, we typically use a regular green sponge. And to clean the kitchen, we typically use paper towel and some cleaning product. Okay, so first off, I'm going to have you get rid of these because these are, I consider these single-use items because they typically don't last very long in the home. They get dirty, they get stinky, and we tend to throw them out really, really quickly. They right? Yes. The other thing is that these can't be recycled. A lot of the times we're cutting down old growth forests to make virgin paper products like paper towels. I'm gonna to give you a few solutions so that you can ditch the paper towel as well. I wanna take a look inside your fridge. Ready? Okay. So, oh, look at this wonderful fridge. So the first thing I notice, which I love, is all the glass containers that you have in here. There's no need to go out and buy fancy new mason jars. You can use what you already have in the home. What I do notice, though, in your fridge is all of these little plastic baggies. I want to show you what to use instead. Are you ready for some sustainable swaps? I'm so ready. Let's do it. <laughs> Instead of using paper towels, I want you to try these Swedish dishcloths. Have you ever heard of these before? No. They absorb 15 times their weight in liquid. But what I love about them is they actually replace up to 17 rolls of paper towel. Wow. Are you ready to give these a try? Yeah, that's amazing. So how long do these last? These will last you up to a year. What do you typically use to store or carry food in? We typically use plastic baggies for um, food or snacks for my nephew. We also do use saran wrap for leftovers and sometimes the kind of harder plastic containers. Have you ever used a beeswax wrap? No. So these are very innovative. So these are a wonderful way to one, keep your food fresher longer because we know that a lot of the times we're throwing food out because we're not storing it properly. The other option is to do something called a stasher bag. Now stasher bags are reusable silicone bags to store food or carry food in. These are wonderful because they can be reused over and over again. 
those little plastic baggies, right, that everyone puts their produce in. Everyone does it, so don't feel bad. But I want you to try these mesh bags instead. These go a very long way. So you take these to the grocery store with you, and instead of pulling or tearing off one of those little plastic baggies, you're going to use these instead. This is great. I also think that the plastic bags kind of trick us into thinking we need to separate everything. But as you said, they can all just go in here. Tell me, how are you feeling about all of these swaps? I'm feeling really great about them. I thought we were really conscious of our waste, and although I did want to produce less waste, I thought we were doing not too bad of a job, but this is showing me that there's a lot more that we can do and there can be a lot less waste coming from our home. You know what? Bless you for letting us into your home. <laughs> Candace Batista joins us live, everyone. <laughs> as well, which they is so are, nice. They are. Okay, so we were all over your house, in the fridge, in doing the fridge. all the things. <laughs> Talk to me about the biggest impact this challenge has had for your family in Nirmala. The biggest impact, I would say, is definitely our food waste reduction and our plastic waste reduction as well. Good. So we were able to also reduce plastic waste um, by, Candace gave us some really great soap. Oh, nice. um, so that's reducing the plastic bottles. It was also really great on the hands. A lot of our plastic waste came from like groceries at the grocery store, the bags, um, things come in. So we started using the mesh bags she gave us mm -hmm. and also storing food in plastic was a huge one. So um, that we reduced a lot of waste there as well. And that's everyone, right? Yeah. A everyone, lot of us yeah. are so using common. plastic, the yeah. celeries in the plastic, the broccolis in the plastic. Yeah. We're gonna talk about that. What was the hardest thing for you or your kids or your family? Honestly, it, there wasn't much that was very hard. I mm -hmm. didn't really find it so challenging to make the switch. But I guess um, uh, there was a bit of a transition. So, you know, yeah. you're kind of used to reaching for certain things. But Candace gave us some really great tips about accessibility. And that, okay. I think, was really key in making the transition seamless. Okay, so you were already somewhat of a green family. So this is yes. just going to take you to the next level, which is awesome. Uh, Candace gave you a whole bunch of different products to try. So you tried the beeswax wraps. Yes. How did that go? The beeswax wraps were really great. They come in a, a variety <laughs> of different sizes, yeah. which was really good. Um, so they can be used for many things. She gave us a great tip about some kind of smellier foods like onions to label yes. them and you kind of have your one set for your onions, stuff like that. Yeah. But I found the the best thing about them is that they kept the food really fresh. Mm. So even though we were storing them sometimes before in plastic, they would get stale quicker and then we that would be plastic waste and then the food waste on top of that. Okay. So this was reducing the plastic waste and then also reducing the food waste because the food was staying fresher. And this is very common, right? The most common, the reason why we throw out most of our food in our home is because we're not storing it properly. Mm -hmm. We're not using the right tools for the job. So these are my favorite from Abigo. This is a Canadian invention. Tony is amazing. She's nice. a female founder. And she designed these to literally cover any food and the way they work is the same way as a skin so if you think of an avocado skin it's still breathing right so mm -hmm. this doesn't eliminate the oxygen that this might need to stay fresh right. um, it works in the same way so the and the versatility of these they come in as you mentioned huge sizes you can wrap breads they're very easy to use you just mold them use your fingers warm it up like this and voila you're done it stays it stays, right? Yeah. And these are super easy to wash trays. Like people, that's one of the most common questions I get is how do you wash these? How do you wash them? So because they're beeswax, there is a risk of melting. So you would never use super hot water with these. Okay. You use cold water with a light eco uh, soap. Yeah. Um, and then you give them a good wash with your hands, like I'm doing here in the video. Uh -huh. Super easy. And then the most important thing is not to fold them before they are fully dry. Okay. Because if you fold them and store them, then they're going to obviously get mold so you mm -hmm. don't want that um, absolutely do not want that to happen so these are a wonderful thing to keep your herbs especially herbs things like broccoli salads in fact you can get up to three weeks of food saving That's with amazing. these beeswax wraps and do you use them again and again and again and yes. again and these again? These will last you about a year. Good. Um, some people a little bit less because they might use them more. So yeah. that's why it's great to have a selection of sizes. Mm. And as Nirmala said, to keep the really smelly foods like garlic and onions, mm -hmm. maybe you have one or two that you use just for those. For sure. And keep them in an accessible spot. Yeah. Don't hide them away because you're going to be looking for them in the same way as you would for a plastic wrap. Yes. Keep them in the same place so that you can get to it right away, right? Yeah, yeah. that was key. Well, 
we can, they're great both yeah. in and out of the fridge. Yes. Oh, good. Yeah. So even for the countertop. Yeah. Perfect. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, we can talk about it, but then they should try it. So to help you on your eco journey, you're all going to go home with your own Abigo beeswax. <laughs> try them. Tell your friends about them. <laughs> You also tried these silicone uh, baggies. What do you yeah. think of these, Nirmala? I love these. They were really great for my nephew. I'm um, sending him to yeah. school with snacks. And I actually, what I love most, most about them is how versatile they are. Mm -hmm. So I went on a trip recently and I took some of these bags in my luggage. I stored some of my makeup in there, makeup brushes, my creams. Nice. Because I always have to put a plastic bag in case, you know, your cream spills. Yes. yes. Then you just throw that in the garbage. Yeah. So this was really great and it fit great into the luggage as well. Yeah, that is fantastic. And the versatility of these is what you mentioned. These can go in the dishwasher, the microwave. You can put them in boiling water on the cooktop, on the on the stovetop. Yes. If you're happening happening to make something that would be able to be cooked in here, okay. and they last forever. These are going to last way longer than a year. Have a whole stash of them. That's okay. why they're called stasher bags. Yeah. And just rotate them as much as you can. These are, and again, saving food. And also, a lot of people don't want to pack glass yeah. because glass is heavy to schlep. Yeah. Yep. You pack your lunch like I did in here. You can and add everything so instead of putting a, a, a salad in a jar you can put it in a mason bag in a stasher bag like this better as well because you shake up that dressing in the bag exactly. it's going to be better exactly. than shaking <laughs> it up in the uh, in the mason jar very good i love that washing it same same right same turn, it you can put, turn it inside out or you put it in the i always like to put them in the lower uh dishwasher rack yeah super versatile put them in the dishwasher and you're off to the races That's you don't so have to easy. wash these by hand fantastic yeah. and a great alternative to plastic so you're all going to go home with a stasher your bag. Lots of goodies today. Okay, you mentioned in the tape and all the time that the kitchen is a good place to start if you're trying to be a little bit more sustainable and reduce waste at home. Tell us about this new kitchen appliance. It's also about saving money, right? Because we yes. throw so much food away. About $1,800 the average Canadian mm. is throwing away every single year of food. Like we're literally just, we might as well just put it in the toilet and flush it. Right. Please don't do that. <laughs> so we want to keep food out of landfills. We have right. more food in landfill than anything else. When food heads to the landfill, it breaks down mm -hmm. and it creates methane gas, which is much more. So in order to mitigate food waste, Lomi, which is a Canadian company, uh, the company's Pila, actually, they founded, it's a Canadian company that founded the first biodegradable phone cases. Oh. And the problem with biodegradable products is there's nowhere to put them when you buy them. So they designed this machine to help that situation. So okay. you could put certain types of bioplastics in here. Uh -huh. But what I love about this is the food waste. So if you have food scraps, instead of putting them in the garbage, you put them in there. Yep. It's a kitchen, com it's kind of a composter. It breaks down the food over time. Yep. And essentially you get this unbelievable organic nutrient soil that you can then add to your garden. So it's such a phenomenal machine. It's also smart technology. So um, you can hook it up to your iPhone, which is amazing. Wow. And you can follow um, how much how much food you're actually reducing. So you're looking at about an 80% reduction in food waste, yeah. which is amazing. Reducing your overall carbon footprint by about 127%. So it's pretty significant. Yes. And you get rewards, which is so amazing. So as okay. you hook it up to your phone, they reward you. Oh. And then you go on their website and you can look for different things, filters and other things. But this That's is one amazing. of... And it's Canadian. That's lovely. Right? Well done finding this. <laughs> Okay, you used this, you loved it? Yes, loved it. I feel like we want to see uh, if there might be someone else who loves it. So we are actually going to draw for this. To reduce food waste, we're going to send one lucky audience member home with their very own Lomi. Valued at $500. Now who's going to win it? Who's going to win it? Let's see what we got here. The winner is... Yeah, you can take it with you on the TTC. <laughs> <laughs> Selena Johnson! <laughs> Selena Johnson! <laughs> it's yours, honey! Yes! Enjoy! Thanks to both of you for this. So Let's go to break. There's more coming up. Stay with us. Coming up, we try trending viral fitness products. Okay, I'm gonna just leave with my favorite. I yes. love this thing. City Lines Wellness Wednesdays is brought to you in partnership with Jameson Vitamins. For everyday immune support, Jameson is here for your health. Welcome back. There are so 
many products going viral on social media that claim to make exercising easier. So here with a roundup of cool fitness finds is Amanda Muse. <laughs> we tested them out for us. So does social media affect and influence your workouts at all? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like it encourages me to move and then you can find some fun things yes. added in there. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing anything excessive. 30 minutes a day, two to five times a week if you can it's work perfect. it in there. And I did hear a fitness instructor say move on purpose. Yeah. And then if you can make it fun, that it's like a happy marriage for your oh, workout. Oh, I love that. Make it fun and make it cute. Yes. Like look at your outfit. <laughs> Thank you. That would make me want to work out. <laughs> so you're going to show us the products that you take tested and we are going to start with this weighted vest this is a weighted vest this okay i'm going to just lead with my favorite i yeah. love this thing maybe so, you should help i'm going to help you <sighs> so this one is a fixed weight style you can choose other ones that have little plates that you can add weight take away weight okay and why this is great first of all walking fairly accessible if you're already walking this is an added little cardio increase you're going to feel that difference you want to go like 10 to 15 percent of your body weight you got it girl yeah um things that it's going to help oddly enough as we go through menopause we lose bone density in our hips our so hips this, yes come on i want my I money know. back i know what so else? this <laughs> is going to help you with that with preventing bone loss it's going to help with your balance okay. preventing even falls yeah so you can just be walking the dog you don't even need to be doing push-ups or anything and it's amazing. So yes. some cons, though, is that in hot weather, you might feel a little bit too hot. Yes. Um, and then choosing the right fit. What I like about this one, actually, in the back, it has these parts. It's a little bit stretchy. So it fits nice and snug here. Oh, yeah, it does. A little bit stretch. And so yeah. it can fit your body well. So yeah. that's the only thing when you're buying online. Maybe choose a vendor you know you can return and get the right one if it doesn't yes. work out. And I like that the clip, it's above the chest. Yes. Right? So it's like you're not going to have that strangulation happening uh, Across that line. Absolutely. Very nice and very good. It works out. So, oh, thanks, honey. Help you. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, okay, next up, we have a hula hoop, which I do not see on this table. Right. It's going gonna, it's gonna to give you a little trick here. So, this is our hula hoop. It's a hula hoop workout. So, I'm actually going to set you okay. up here. Okay, we need right. the hula hoop ball. It comes with a weighted ball yeah. that you set up as a track around your person here. Nice. This might be a two person job. Okay. So, we're going to set up the track here. Yeah. We're gonna loop you in, and then the workout. It's gonna be. Oops, it's gonna be fun. You're gonna get here. Actually, you hold I'll that hold side that. there. You're gonna get this cardio going. Okay. You might need a little space. It's almost like the thing where. Um, remember when we were younger and you had the thing with the lemon? Yes. Yeah. Lemon, whatever. So give it a little spin, and then you just start hula hooping. Work Woo! those hips, girl. It's good. <laughs> It's going to take a little bit of some practice, yeah, right? Yeah. But back to our first part, if you're going to have fun with this workout, you're uh -huh. going to do it, right? Yeah. So they say 30 minutes. I don't think I'm getting anywhere with oh 30 gosh, minutes are you doing serious? this. Right. Well, um, it could get really fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You can even switch it to the other side. Yeah. So it is really fun. It's having its moment on TikTok. It is, you know, adjustable. You have the different links you can add in or take away as you go. Okay. Um, it's a fun, it could be a little gimmicky, but if you're having fun, have at her. Do it. Whatever's going to get you to get up, I think, is, is worthwhile. Okay, we have this uh, headband here. What is this going to do? It's kind okay. of stylish. So this headband is great for people who are wearing, let's say, earbuds, but don't love the earbuds. Because sometimes they fall out. Do you need me to help you I think I can do it. I you think I can it? do it. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Um, right, so because you can get a little sweaty and your earbuds can fall out. Yes. Um, so this is a great alternative. Also, if you're going for a run and maybe your ears get a little chilly, this change of oh, season, like you're not wearing a hat, you have it in there. Yeah. Hooks up to your Bluetooth, easily chargeable. Um, the only thing I found was that I have a very big head <laughs> and um, I already had it quite tight. So if you have a smaller head, you might not find it fits very well. Oh. Um, if you're maybe a little bit hard of hearing, the volume doesn't get too loud, okay. which is maybe great for people not wanting to lose their hearing as they go. Um, but I hear you though, sometimes you need that pump, right? Yes. When I used to run, it's like I wanted it kind of loud in my ears, even right. if it was only in one, so that I could, you know, feel the beat. Oh, yeah. And then the only other thing is it is washable. Okay. But maybe a little bit of a, it could be an Amanda thing, is yeah. that I have to take out all the electrical bits oh. to then wash it and put it back together. So I found it great for lower impact where I'm not getting too sweaty. Mm -hmm. And also sleeping and meditation, it could be a great Ooh, feature. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's an Amanda and Tracy thing, though. I don't want to take the electrical mm. out before I wash it. Come on. Don't make me, don't make me work. Don't make me work. <laughs> 
Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about jumping rope. Right, okay, so I used to do kickboxing, and we yeah. would do five minutes of skip rope, and if you've ever, like, hit a toe oh, with a rope, it hurts, it hurts You wouldn't so on an enemy, it's just yes. the worst. Also, skip rope was kinda hard to do indoors. Yes. I found a digital rope without the rope part. So, I mean, oh. this one in particular is adjustable. Oh. You could put it in there two for one. Okay. So it does actually track your skip rope, so, you just kind of do a little, and then Tracy, you were in heels, I'm still gonna make you try it. Oh, so you okay. hold on right, to these, you got it. Yep. and you kind of just do the motions of the skipping. Yeah. Okay, it's gonna track how many loops you do, the time you're skipping, could even calories burned if that matters oh, to you. Okay. Um, here's the thing, skipping indoors, you don't have to skip too much. Oh, okay, if you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll sk stop now. <laughs> skipping indoors is tricky, you might be hitting the roof. Yes. This is a great alternative. Yeah. Um, the thing is though, is like, are you actually gonna use it? Is it just gonna collect dust in your workout oh. room? But if it's something fun that's gonna get you moving, and maybe it's just like that little kickstart, then I think, get it. Absolutely. Okay, I like that. Very nice. And also, you don't have to like be trying to clear the rope, which makes it slightly easier. But once again, if it'll make you move, do it. Okay, last things last. Uh, you're a fan of protein shakes. Yeah. You've got something that's going to revolutionize it, I think. <laughs> I think so. So right? this is like what we're used to, right? Totally. The protein shaker, we've got the little metal. You shake yes. the protein. It's super annoying, actually, it, is it what is. it is. It's, yeah. It's all the protein on yes. there. You get like clumps of protein. Mm. Nobody wants that. We have an electric one, my friends. Oh, so this my charges. Goodness. You add your preferred liquid on the inside. Okay. Then you push the start button. Where's my little start button? And it creates a vortex. <laughs> you take your protein powder and yeah. slowly add it in, okay? Gonna let it mixy mix here. Yeah. It won't mix things like a banana or ice. Right. But it is gonna get your protein nice and smooth. Hopefully that was enough time. I would even um, use that for my blended coffee in the right. morning. And look at this, you get like a little Oh, that's frothy. so smart. And it is good to go. No clumps. No chunks, no clumps. Very good. Yeah, so handy. I would get that in a heartbeat. I would actually get a few of those. And I know that you're gonna wanna try them out as well. Amanda, thank you very much for you're that. Welcome. That was a good little roundup there. Very nice, yeah. If you wanna try out any of these fitness finds, shop the show. That's why we put that QR code, there it is, up on the screen. <laughs> Grab your phone, scan that code, and we will take you right to these items and you can throw them in the cart and you can buy them. Happy shopping, everyone. Time for a break, we're gonna see you on the other side. See, look, I'm skipping. Coming up, does couponing really give us more bang for our buck? The way to prompt that consumer to buy us a little bit more often was a coupon. Right, and then you're buying brands that you wouldn't usually buy because yeah, yeah. you can't afford that. Uh -huh. Honey, and couponing seems like a great hack, but does it really give us more bang for our buck? I talked to the audience. We've got some couponers out there. Here with the scoop is Bruce Celery. Hello, Tracy. Hello. I love this topic. It's, it's, a topic. it's a good topic. I like how you deal with it. So talk to me a little bit about coupon culture. So mm. it is still a thing. Yeah. People are still doing it, but Canada very different than the U.S. So remember those yes. reality TV shows where people had enough product in a bomb shelter to last them through the apocalypse with <laughs> yes. leftovers? Yeah. It is not the same here in Canada for lots of different reasons. Okay, so we're actually gonna go through some of the things you might wanna consider. We have given you all these paddles, okay? True, false paddles. I'm gonna ask you questions and you are gonna tell me if it's true or false, all right? First question, true or false? I have used a coupon in the last six months. Okay, let's see. I actually have. Oh. Most of you have and I have as well and I'm yeah. not a big couponer, but yes. <laughs> prices these days. There is a lot of activity and I will say on social media, there are tons of extraordinary tips. There yeah. are, uh, there's a couple of influencers, the coupon couple, I love her. She has more energy than me, which I did not what? think was possible. <laughs> yes, it's true. There's uh, living on a loony, there's have oh, coupons yeah. will travel. So there is a ton of really inspirational and practical content. We're going to get to a few tips, but not nearly what those uh, folks have on. on okay, them. people are couponing. Next question, uh, we're gonna talk about how we find coupons, true or false. Paper coupons are the best way to save money when shopping. 
Let's see. Paper coupons oh, okay. are the best I, way to save money what do you when think? shopping. A little more false. A little. I think it's half false, half true. Yeah, I would have guessed false, but in, in, the paper coupons are still a thing in a bunch of places. Yeah. Digital, they are more convenient. They are easier to organize. They also often connect with loyalty programs, which makes life so much easier. Yeah. But where you see paper is the tear pads in the shelf. Yes. Uh, on the shelf. So it's like one for me, one for me, another one for me, another one for me to hold on <laughs> for a couple months down the road. Uh, retailers also still do a lot of couponing on their apps. And this yes. is a place to go look uh, because of loyalty. You may be able to stack your coupons, which is when you use one on top of another, sometimes on something that's already 30% off, which yes. is great. The one tactic they use is to hand you a coupon after you've bought whatever your merchandise oh, yeah. is, encouraging I you. I hate that too. Encouraging you to come back in like yeah. two weeks to buy something else. Another place to look for coupons is the cashback websites. And there's one called mm -hmm. Checkout 51. The difference is you buy the product and then you upload your receipt and then you get a rebate. Now, if the number's big, I'm willing to do that labor. If yeah. for a buck, I am not doing that. So you yeah. have to be sort of clear on whether the benefit is worth it to you. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, which some people don't know about, is called a browser extension. So okay. when you're searching online, you've got Safari or Chrome or whatever, you download this extension. And then when you're on the website, it will crawl around and find uh, discounts and then add them to your transaction before you check out. So those, oh. it's like Honey and another one's called Rakuten. So there's a bunch oh, of the browser right. extensions that you yeah. can choose. Yeah, okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay, here's your next question. True or false? Couponing is worth your time. Couponing is worth your time. I'm going to say true, but I think that it varies. Most of you are saying absolutely true. Yeah. What do you think, Bruce? Well, Bruce? I think people think they should do that. Yeah. I'm like, really? Mm, yeah. I don't know. And here's the distinction that I would make. There's a difference between couponing and flyer shopping. Okay. Because if there's a 50% flyer deal on a whole chicken, I'm driving like a stunt car driver. <laughs> to find the big deal. Yeah. But that's not a coupon, that's flyer shopping. And so okay. you do your meal plan, you write out your list and all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. With couponing, I think you need to really interrogate yourself here and look really um, rigorously at cost versus benefits. Okay, so the benefit part. Easy. Yeah, you save money great. You save some in money. In these ridiculous times. What do you but mean the by the cost? cost? Part, your time. Oh. So if you spend an hour to save 50 bucks, amazing. You spend 10 hours of organizing and researching and driving to save 50 bucks, it's, it's probably not worth it to you. Right. And if you've got a job job where you earn 20 bucks an hour, those 10 hours should go to that job because that's $200 in revenue versus $50. Yes. The second uh, cost is your total spending. So the purpose of a coupon is to have you bore, buy more of my stuff. And they work. That's why retailers and manufacturers uh, offer them. Mm -hmm. But that means you're buying more stuff. And that costs you more money. The second thing is that it will prompt you, it may prompt you to buy a more expensive brand. And I yes. say this with credibility. I spent a good portion of my early career in marketing. I sold national brands. And the way to prompt that consumer to buy us a little bit more often was a coupon. Right, and then you're buying brands that you wouldn't usually buy because yeah, yeah. you can't afford them. Uh-huh, true. Right, okay, give us an example. So let's say you are talking about paper towel. Yeah. You go and you look at a name brand, so it's like a fancy paper towel. Yep. I looked online, six rolls, 90 sheets, $18.47. Okay. Oh my gosh, I have a $3 coupon. Amazing. That's a 16% savings. Fantastic. Good. But when you look at the comparison, the store brand for about the same amount of sheets is $7.77. Mm. So it is double the price to buy that national brand. Now you like the national brand better. It performs mm. way, way better, but it is almost double the price. And you need to ask yourself, is this worth it? Okay, well, I'm gonna ask the audience, true or false, is it worth it to buy the more expensive paper towel? Is it? Oh, I think this is the most compelling case here. They say false. They're saying false. They say false. Here are the two things that everyone needs to consider. Yeah. First is the mental math right? Yes. It's very difficult to do, in particular where there are price points that don't fit with the volume that you're used to buying. So if you go to a club store and it's like 13 rolls for this price, mm -hmm. how does that compare to what I usually buy, which was three rolls? It's very, very difficult because it's yes. not apples to apples. Yeah. The second thing to consider is what's important to you. Yeah. So I will always buy the name brand on Nutella. 
I will always buy it because I know the store brand will not sell in my household and I'll be sitting on it and at the night I'm like eating this <laughs> fake Nutella just to get rid of it. Blah, blah. I won't, it doesn't make any sense. It is so critical for people to be intentional about their spending. Maybe that's couponing, maybe that's flyer shopping, yeah. but really be thoughtful and intentional, especially now, now more than ever, because of how ridiculously expensive everything is. Totally, and I, you say that you might be buying a more expensive product, but you might also be buying things you don't need. Yeah. Because there's a coupon. Uh-huh. Right? So that's kind of a false economy. Yeah. You're not getting ahead. And I wanted, I do the, the brand name ketchup. Like, yeah. I want it to say Heinz. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's certain things. And that's like five bucks. Who cares? Yeah, I'm going to do it, it every time. When it starts to add up and you walk into this bomb shelter that you've assembled, <laughs> it may not be the best personal finance move you right. ever made. Absolutely, Bruce. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. We'll be right back, everyone. Stay with us. <laughs> When you can take two of your favorite foods and put them in one bowl. Chef Matt Dean Pettit is mixing and mashing. It gets, it's get, getting people creative in the kitchen. Welcome back, everyone. I've been wanting to walk in this direction for a long time because it smells really good over here. <laughs> Creating mashups of your favorite food is a great way to make dinner time a little bit more exciting. So here with some fun food combos that are the best of both worlds is Chef Matt Dean Pettit. Hey! Such a genius you are. Wait till you hear to these mashups. Like MDP, you love a good mashup. I do. Um, what is the key to making sure these recipes work? That might be the first time I've ever been called a genius, so thank you very much. <laughs> that was good. I'll take full credit for that. Yeah, uh, yeah no, I'm the inventor of mashup foods. Yes, you are. Uh, I'll put that beside my long <laughs> list of titles and acronyms. Um, you know what? What do I love about it? Essentially, when you can take two of your favorite foods and put them in one dish. That's mm. the rule of thumb, right? Two of your favorite dishes into one or two of your favorite snacks, whatever it might be, flavors, whatever. So... I love it. It's just something, and again, it gets it's get getting people creative in the kitchen, right? Right. Use what you have in your pantry. Use what you have around you. Uh -huh. You know, the old triple R: reduce, reuse, recycle. That's right. We've been talking a lot about that. Well, so right? why not put some of those leftover ingredients with you something else it. you love and do a thing? So your first mashup is butter, chicken, empanadas. Absolutely. This sounds yeah. delicious. Right. Look at this. So just oozing mm. out. So butter chicken, again, you can do it either from home. So you're starting with like gram marsala. You've got the beautiful um, different spices that you're building. Typically when you're building, you know, Indian cuisine, you need time. Mm -hmm. Time, time, time. Mm -hmm. Slow cooking. You're letting it go. So as we talk about this here, I've got them done and ready to go. Again, if you're at home and it's a Tuesday night, skip forward. You know, get into it and you can buy your favorite sort of sauce ready to go. Mm -hmm. Chicken thigh, break it down. Butter chicken sauce in. You know, you can buy either store-bought dough or pre, you know, uh, dough that's come out rolled out. Yeah. Or if you're getting adventurous, make your own. A couple little spheres. So we're making empanadas. Essentially, you know, punch the dough out. One on the bottom, roll it out. Filling in the middle. Crimp it. Put the top on. Crimp it together. You could all use, like my mom used to do, she used to use a the fork. fork. The fork yeah. move. We all know the fork move. Yeah. A little dip in the water. That was my move. I was allowed to be the crimper. Yes, um, it's a very special job. It is. And th these here are beautiful butter chicken empanadas. These are for, we actually serve this in our place, Trinity Market. Oh, and people love it. So how long would you bake those for? So everything goes in, crimp it, 2025. 20, yeah. And uh, golden brown and away to go. It's very unbelievable. Nice. You're pre-cooking down your sauce. You're filling already. Okay. So butter chicken, done. Next mashup, we yeah. are ta taking the tacos, but we are doing the cheeseburger edition of your tacos, which I don't know if there are two better foods you could mash up. Right? So, that, like, that's incredible. So, smash burger cheeseburgers yes. in taco form. Yeah. And essentially, to your point, it's the greatest thing of all time. Yeah. So, we're going to do this live time. Super, super simple. So, we've got uh, ground chuck. Again, if you're using it, you're buying, you know, I always recommend buying uh, medium, medium ground beef. Never yeah. lean because you're going to lose all that fat and flavor and everything. And yeah. the fat is the good thing. Right. right. This is when fat is good. Keep the fat yeah. in the pan. Keep the fat in um, there. So we're doing tortilla, corn tortilla. Yeah. And you just want to press it down. This has gone viral. Thank you for calling me a genius, but I did not invent this. <laughs> this I know we've done on the show before mashup sort of, you know, viral videos that have yeah. gone. Yeah. So all I'm doing is ground beef down, pushing this through. We're going to cook this essentially in live time as well, nice. which is great. 
you're just pushing it. And so now you've got about a minute, you know, minute, two minutes here, and you're just looking to sort of smash that together. So you can smell that, right? Like it it's smells just so good. Super the, simple. The fact that it's smashed, though, does that allow it to cook through a it, little easier? It does. You're looking for that caramelization. So when you smash a burger down like that, mm -hmm. you're looking for that beautiful sort of like, you know, crispy, crunchy sort of sides. Yeah. Typically speaking, again, you want to keep everything in, all that flavor. We're going to flip it over in a second okay. and let that continually cook. Like, this is something you can do on a Tuesday night, right? Oh, Easy. my gosh, absolutely. I just picked Tuesday because that's like a day nobody wants to do anything. For some reason, why is it Tuesdays are like that? Um, what is the thing that people love the most at your restaurant? Um, what are they coming in and you know for sure you're going to be... I, a ton I can, of these. Yeah, you know what? I cannot lie. Butter, chicken, and bananas. That's what they love. They love a I little get bit it. of weird wine bar. Trinity Market's wine, so snackies and wine. Yeah. You get that with like a nice little Riesling, the heat and the sweet. Mm. The heat and the sweet. That's a rule of thumb, right? Mm -hmm. When you're pairing foods, almost like mashup stuff. Like, yeah. talk to me right now, oh, that's Trace. That's good. Look at this. That's talk fantastic. to me, right? Like, look yeah. at this. It's like we've done this before. So, so now the taco little bit of cheese. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Into a little bit of tomatoes. I got tomatoes on the vine here. Nice. Let's get real. Pickles, do we like pickles? We love pickles. I do too. Yeah, so really, pickles, really good. So pickles, let's get right into it. We're gonna do a little uh, cheeseburger sauce. Everybody knows yep. the rule. Does there, do you know the secret of like a real cheeseburger the sauce? The burger sauce, what yeah. is it? It's Thousand Island dressing. Yeah. Not to get, hopefully we don't get like a legal lawsuit here. But, uh, <laughs> don't spoiler, sue spoiler, us. Yeah, spoiler alert, don't sue us. It is Thousand Island dressing with a little bit of pickles. Like relish. Relish. Okay. Yeah. So here, this yeah. is like, this is good to go. This is incredible. Can we just get a plate right here? Yeah, This for is going to sure. be super hot, so just be careful. As we plate this, give that 30 seconds, but like, just look how good that is right here. Beautiful. This is unbelievable. Very nice. Right? Like, this yeah. is going to be gorgeous. That is gorgeous. So as that goes, that's going to be hot We're going to let that cool down yeah, yeah. for a second while we get to our last mashup which is the deviled eggs. Deviled egg uh, pasta salad. But it's a pasta. So you go to, you know, a uh, family event, you're going to a cookout, you're going to a barbecue, you're hanging out, everybody loves pasta salad, I bring a pasta yeah, salad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My family loves pasta it's a, it's salad. It's a crowd favorite. It's a crowd favorite, really. Yeah. Uh, and then you combine deviled eggs, which nobody likes to make because they stink up the house, they take a while, you gotta <laughs> pipe it in. You know, your nana maybe makes it, your grandmother, yeah, yeah. whoever, somebody does, shows up with beautiful ones. I used to make them with lobster topped on top. Oh my gosh. But here we get that easy. Yeah, so here we're just gonna have some fun and it is simple. So eggs, uh, sorry, elbow pasta, boil yep. off your eggs, paprika. You're putting in obviously that egg. We've got a little hero display here ready to go if you can zoom in on that. That's very, so you're so, not making a deviled egg. You're boiling the you're egg. You're boiling the you're eggs. You're slicing it up. You're off. putting in mayo. You're putting yep. in red onion. You've got yep. your elbow pasta. You're making just like you would, but you're incorporating all that goodness together. Beautiful. And you mix it up mix and you've got up. a beautiful pasta salad. Dill. Dill is always a play in dill. any pasta salad. Yes. So lightens it up, freshens it up. So there's like three really great mash smash ups. up, mash up dishes. That cheeseburger taco is going to be unbelievable. Uh, it is going to be amazing. If you want to smash it, you go ahead. Maddie, you always come to, he like, he did not come to play. Look at this. Go for it. Yes. CityLine.tv for the recipe. Be sure to visit our website. Oh, yeah. There's tons of recipes there. We're going to break. we got more coming up. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And fresh off the Coming up, I discover a pattern in my spring plans. Yeah. So I do a lot of sitting at the breakfast bar watching Leo cook with a drink. Love. Or I do a lot of watching Leo garden while I have a drink and watch. <laughs> I don't have a problem, I promise. here with warmer weather it just makes us feel good and I I live my life always thinking about the thing I'm looking forward to I try and be in the moment but it's also like oh my gosh I can't wait to whatever XYZ it could be sit on my couch braless but there's something right <laughs> so I wanted to ask you all what you're looking forward to Amanda is there something you're looking forward to indeed I'm turning 40 at the end of April <gasps> Yes. I feel so good. So, yeah. And you should be excited. It's a good time. <laughs> Loving it. Okay, Maddie, what about you? Uh, Dunedin Jays, spring training baseball. Oh, yes. A little bit of golf, tan up a bit. Yes. <laughs> this is good. the ultimate Jays fan. Well, I mean, I can throw in a few teams in there if we're talking about the ultimate. It, You're a it, sports guy. I am. I like it. Yeah, you, you know what? Love my, it. You know what it is? My brain turns off and I just like. 
watch. <laughs> and there's not much else going on, so hours it's great. And hours and hours. Yeah. My brain turns off too, but for other reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Candace, what are you looking forward to? Is there something um, you're looking forward to? I'm looking forward to the summer because yes. I love gardening, but it's more so my husband gardens and I oversee. Yes! <laughs> so that's what I'm looking forward to the garden, a glass of wine, yes. and just chilling on a Sunday afternoon, mm. listening to some Bob Marley. Heaven. Nice. Yes. Nice. Heaven. Yeah. You yeah. sound like your family works the way ours does. Yeah. Yeah. So I do a lot of sitting at the breakfast bar watching Leo cook with yep. a drink. Love. Or I do a lot of watching Leo garden while I have a drink and I watch. <laughs> I don't have a problem, I promise. It works well for us. Brucey Bruce, what are you looking forward to? We have this ice cream shop in our neighborhood called The Dippery. Oh, and I it know is it. soft serve. And I, I am it. looking forward to walking up to the dippery yeah. and ordering a medium, because I'm not insane, a medium <laughs> ice cream with uh, fl creme caramel fleur de sel, yes. like that, yes. Yes. with yes. Oreo chunks oh, wow. on top. Here and I'm going to sit yes, there please. and savor every <laughs> yeah. single bite and have a tear. Because yeah. ice cream season has arrived. Yes, yes. 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 And it's a beautiful time. Oh, beautiful. There's all these signs that we are changing seasons and mm -hmm. every single one of them is exciting even waking up in the morning and oh. it's like oh I can see like there's sun yes. yeah. you know it's not dark anymore oh, or yeah. looking at the grass and there's grass and no snow which actually happened too much this winter yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something that we're all very much looking forward to here on City Line. I've been hosting the show for 15 years it has been an absolute honor being part of this team I look at the table and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at my kids. <laughs> look at my kids looking at me with smiles. It's such a beautiful thing. So, we have been nominated by the Canadian Screen Awards as the best talk series. Yes. And also, I have been nominated as best host, talk show. to being able to celebrate with this team even if we do not take home one trophy the fact is we are putting out groundbreaking television quite frequently our segments are going viral but most importantly our viewers are learning they're taking yeah. our information with them to the doctor office yeah. doctor's office they are trying to ask their medical uh, authorities for hormones because they saw on city line that they might have a hormonal problem. Like, this is the stuff we are proud about on the show. We are getting women, I hope, more comfortable in their bodies. I have someone talk to me at least once a day about the episode where we talked about our weight on the show. So, yes, City Line, thank you for supporting us. And thank you for joining us every day. We're going to break, we'll be right back. Right back. Shine bright. With City Line. It is a vibe. For a fresh take on fashion. That one's got my name on it. Food. These ingredients are screaming spring. And decor. Ah, pick this whole thing up yeah. and put it in my living room. It's the perfect way to brighten your day. Literally light up the morning. Wow is right, honey. Wow is right. City Line. Weekdays. Only on City TV. fantastic Wednesday so once again thank you so much to our experts thank you Amanda Bruce and Candace and Maddie uh, and thank you to our viewers at home that watch us today and every day thanks to our studio audience you're a lot of fun today and we will see you all tomorrow take care Mwah.